What's going on everyone? I'm a member of the Blender community and welcome to the video. Today in this video we're going to be making this cool bubble wallpaper that you see in the background here. Now the only things you're going to need in this video is Blender 2.79 and maybe an editing tool like Photoshop or Lightroom or something. But you can always download a light editing app on your phone and modify it there. So open up Blender, delete everything except for the default queue because we're actually going to be using that. Hold control and press 3. This is going to set a subsurf modifier view of 3 onto the object. Now you have to hit apply and hit control 2 to add another subsurf modifier and hit smooth. This is going to create a perfect topology sphere in which we're going to use to texture. Before we texture though, we have to set up our scene. So let's press 7 to go into top view, press shift A and create a camera. And with this camera, we're going to move it up to the height of about 6 blender units. Let's start by hitting Shift D and moving all of these spheres around. All of these spheres are going to be the bubbles. One thing that really sells this render is just being a picture is that it's not perfectly set out. So don't be afraid to go out of the ordinary and place spheres where they wouldn't usually be. In a sense, just basically make it unperfect as that's what's going to sell the render. Now don't worry about holes right below the render. We're going to fix that later. And there we go, that's looking pretty good so far if we go into rendered mode. And let's press Shift B to put a box around here. It's looking pretty good so far, that's basically all we need to do. Next, we need to select all of these spheres, so hit Z to go into wireframe mode, press B, and select all of these spheres, press Shift D, and move them down on the Z axis. After you move them down, hit rotate, and put in a random amount, so I'm going to put in 56. And don't forget to press Z at the end so it rotates on the Z axis. Now go back in your camera and move these spheres around so it covers up some of the holes. Not necessarily all of the holes, you can still see through a little, just some of the holes. And third, we're going to put in one more layer, so copy all of these, hit Shift D, press Z, and rotate it, eh, let's just say 167 degrees on the Z axis. That's pretty good. Now if we go into the camera, you can see that there are very little holes. Let me select everything here again. And that's looking pretty good. There we go. So now what we have to do is we have to add some sense of photorealism to this render. So let's slowly but surely move objects up and down just to make it look just to make it look imperfect to give the impression of photorealism. If you see a hole right here, maybe you can move a ball up and under it. That looks pretty good. All we're doing is just moving the second layer up to the first layer and moving the first layer up a little. There we go, it's looking pretty good. Now we can always add a few more balls over here just to make sure everything's good. Hit Z, move things around a little. And if we press Shift Z, I keep on saving this, if we press Shift Z, you should see very little holes, but we still need some holes in our render. Next, we're going to set up the lighting in our render, so hit Shift A, go to Mesh, create a plane, go into one front orthographic view, press S to scale, scale it up to just above the length of all the objects here, hit G and then Z to move the object down, and go over here to your Materials tab, hit New, and then type in Emission. I just named this emission so we can find it later. Click over here and hit E. That's a shortcut to get to your emission. Now put this to a value like 6. I am using Filmic Blender. And hit 0 to go back in your camera. Hit Shift Z. And we can see here that the orbs are getting light from behind. Maybe we could scale this up a little. Yeah, that's looking about right. Now's a good time to save, so I'd recommend saving your project file. Now we are going to be working on the mesh itself. Select the plane, select your original center sphere, and select your camera, hit M and move to the second layer. Now hit 2 to go to the second layer, click on the orb, and we are going to be modifying it in the compositing tab. So let's go into camera mode again here, and hit Shift Z. Now let's create a new material for it, delete the diffuse, hit Shift A, type in mix, connect it up. And from my experience, and I've done this before, the best setting is 0.091. Next, hit Shift A, hit Search, and type in Glass. Put that on the top, and hit Shift A, and type in GLO. Glossy should pop up. Put that on the bottom. 
Now the glossy is originally going to come with a roughness. We want to take that roughness away and we want to add the roughness of a 0 0.02 to the glass. Finally, what we're going to do and what's going to make this orb distinguishable here is adding color to it. So hit Shift A, type in search, and type in COL. This should pop up a color ramp. Where'd it go? There it is. And plug it into both of the color outputs. Now, over here in this black tab, we're going to want to change it to a deep red in a way. Something kind of deep like that. That's pretty good. And over here, very slight, but you're going to want to make it just a little red. And we can always move this up or down depending on what we want to do. If you don't like that, you can just make everything white here. And you can move the red up a little. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Now, if we take everything here and hit M and move it to the first layer, we can see that there is one ball in the center of all of these balls that has a material applied to it. But we want the material applied to all of them. So select your plane on the bottom, select your camera and hit H so we don't interfere with it. Then tap A to select everything and hold shift and right click this ball right here. That's going to make the ball selected and above everything else. Next, hold control and hit L. This means make links. Make links is basically a quicker way of applying a lot of materials, a lot of modifiers, or a lot of different fonts if you're using texts to different objects all at once. So scroll down to materials and hit enter. Now everything here is the same exact material, so it can hit Alt-H and everything will pop back up. Hit zero to go back into your camera, hit Shift-Z, and let's see what this looks like. This is looking a lot better already. But something's missing, it just doesn't look the same as the background I made before. There's a simple solution to this, using an HDRI. HDRI stands for High Dynamic Range Image, and if we use one it'll make our render look a lot more photorealistic. So let's go over to the World panel, and I can use Pro Lighting Skies, but for the purpose of this tutorial I'm not going to. So click on Use Nodes, and change this color over to an environment texture. Hit Open, and generally you're going to want to pick an image that is around the inside, so like an inside HDRI. If you don't know what HDRIs are, or you don't have an HDRI, you can simply go online, find a website, and download one for free. Next, go to where you found your HDR, click on it, hit Open Image, and if we click on World Background in our display here, just like that, we can see that we do have an HDRI inside of a house. So that's awesome. All we have to do is hit zero, hit shift Z, and there we go. It's very small, but you can see little reflections are popping up around the bubbles. Now we can modify these bubbles one last time, so we can just move them slightly, move them around a little, make everything look a little bit more photorealistic, try to block out some more of the light, looking pretty good so far but we have to add a final touch so click on the top of your sphere here use the 3d cursor to click on the top of the sphere and hit shift a whoop i just hit normal a there hit shift a go to empty and add in a plane axis or axes now that we have this set we can click on our camera go to our camera over here and add the focus as the empty so type in empty empty should pop up and click on it now we can adjust the size of our radius, and once we go back into render mode, we can really see the difference at which focus has on our image. As we can see, the orbs in the back are starting to blur it out a little, while the orbs in the front are appearing more prominent. So all we need to do now is give it a test render, adjust some things in post-processing, and then you'll be done. So just for sake of the render, I'm going to take this cube, hit Shift D, move it over here. Technically it's still a cube, because it's still a subdivide cube. That's something to think about. I'm just trying to cover up any of the holes here just to make sure the render looks good. Alright, it's looking pretty good so far. So we're going to do a test render. So over here in your rendering settings, I would move this resolution to 25% of 1080 pixels. And over here in performance, obviously 256 because that's the maximum performance that you can get out of cycles and move this render over here to something like 50 samples, something close to your preview render. Now over here, make sure you have denoising checked on. There are a lot of glass materials in close proximity to each other, all sharing the same light source. 
are all being affected by the same light source. So fireflies and noise is bound to be created, so I would just check denoising over here. Now that your settings are all ready, click F12 and wait about 30 seconds. While you're waiting, don't forget to drop a like on the video, hit subscribe, and turn on that bell for post notifications. Also, don't forget to check out my Instagram and my art station, as well as my DeviantArt, to stay up to date with my most recent renders. Alright, our render has been completed, and as we can see, it's not the highest resolution. But we have some awesome info over here. We can see that the lights are being reflected from the HDRI. We can see that we might need to brighten up the background because up front the spheres aren't too bright up here. And we can see that we nailed the material just right. Now let's go into post processing. So switch back to 3D view over here and go into compositing over here. Now change back into the render result and over here click on the compositing nodes. Now click use nodes, backdrop, and auto render. Alright, hit period to go over to your nodes, if you're off center, and here's where we're going to be manipulating our final render. So hit shift A, hit search, and type in con. This is going to pull up brightness and contrast. This really helps because it affects your image inside the same rendering system. So we can move up our brightness, but as we can see that leaves us without contrast. So we're going to move the contrast up a little, and that's a little too much. You really need to balance a fine line. There we go, that's looking pretty good. Get those get those reds a little bit deeper, get everything a little bit brighter. I say that works. So there's one more thing we're going to do, we're going to make a final render. So we're going to adjust this material, so click on a ball, and we're just going to make this a tint of red. And that will adjust the whole world of the render. After that, go into default, and go back into your rendered mode. There we go, now everything's starting to appear more red, and let's go into the back and adjust the light by bumping it up to something like 10 or 12, I typed in 12, there we go, you gotta give it a minute, but everything is now starting to pop through, maybe we could give it something like 20, there we go, 20 looks pretty good, let's use that, now all you have to do is go into your render, bump it up to something like 300 samples, go over here to your resolution, set it to 100, and multiply each setting by 2 to achieve a high def resolution image, just make sure the aspect ratio say consistent, hit F12, and your render is off. Now all you have to do is wait about 10 minutes, come back to your computer, drink some tea, drink some coffee, and you should have an amazing background wallpaper after that. Maybe adjust the brightness, the saturation, but besides that, that's the render. So that was it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to drop a like and subscribe. I'll leave a link to my gaming channel in the description. And uh, yeah, I've been a member of the Blender community, and I'll see you all later.